Because today we are talking about bad habits. Now they destroy your business. Um, kefir, that's what it's called. We made our own kefir. All right. It stunk like cheese. It was terrible. We threw it away. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's not as disgusting. But bad habits, there's kind of three things. Now, um, one of the three points we want to touch on is this idea of doing what everyone else does. And pertinent to that is this idea of scrolling mindlessly on your phone. You know, yeah. look around. It is. A th- I mean, Jim Rohn used to talk about this a lot. He's dead now, so he's not talking about anything. Um, but Jim Rohn used to talk about this, and it, it is so obvious. It's easy to miss. It's almost like not being able to see the wood for the trees. All right. People want, in general, I know success means different things to everybody. The best description I've ever heard is from Earl Nightingale, which was it's the progressive realization of a worthy goal, where a worthy goal is something worthy of you or your skills. Okay. So, you know, becoming the, the biggest drug dealer in a town probably isn't much of a worthy goal because selling stuff that might kill people or bankrupt them. It isn't particularly worthy, but, you know, there's a lot of subjectivity there. But I think we'd all tend to know what's worthy of us, us and what isn't. Deep inside, we know, you know. We might not always choose to do it, but I think we, we generally know what we perceive as being right and wrong. Yeah. And <clears throat> so most people want to be successful, but most people are not, are they? Nope. They're just not. I mean, m- most people, they live, they get a job, they work, they raise a family, they die. And, and, you know, Thoreau wrote, I think it was Thoreau, wrote about the the lives of quiet desperation people live because mm. they want something more. But before they know it, they've got a family, they've got children. They feel they can't do it. Um, and, and you know, they, they, they wear these chains of conformity and it binds them so tightly because they don't know they're wearing them. You know, the chains that bind us the tightest are indeed the, the, the chains we don't know we're wearing and conformity is one of them. So... They take their lead from everyone else. And when they do want to succeed, what do they do? Well, they just look around at what everyone's doing. Because everyone else, they, they, they project. You know, while they're dying inside and have this, this life of quiet desperation, everyone on the outside, they put on this facade. So they'll look at their neighbours. They'll look at... And social media's made this a lot fucking worse. Social you know, media like, is fucking oh, the, the demon pits, when it? it comes to this fucking shit. Hell. When it comes now, to this in particular. But they will see what other people choose to project and i mean i think we probably all do that to some extent i i i don't go out of my way to project an, an image of, of so anything in particular but it, that doesn't mean to say i reveal it all my innermost thoughts and what's going on in my life to everybody of course i bloody don't you know, there's no point and it's nobody you're just business. inauthentic mate <laughs> inauthentic oh my god can you imagine so people take their lead from what's around them which includes this fucking demon social media so now you think about it, we've got to this, this a situation where in life in general, it's normal to sit there, say, in an airport or a railway station, doom scrolling. Because, yeah. you, you know, you, you, I think Cal Newport talks about embracing boredom. Why don't you just sit mm. there for a bit? I don't, I don't mean sit there being you or just being whatever like these fucking mindset twats like to say. Why don't you just sit there and just accept the boredom or read read a book, you know? But doom scroll, doom scroll, doom scroll. And it's normal. And it's normal for couples now to sit on a sofa with a TV on, no one's watching it, and mm-hmm. they're doom scrolling. I remember a guy, and the, the last time I flew was well, probably a couple of years ago now. Coming up, it was last summer, coming back from the UK, think about it, um, the event we did. And there was a guy sitting ne- next seat over the aisle. He, I swear this is true. He had a Microsoft Surface, and he was watching a video. He was doing this. And his other hand, he had a phone. And I could see because he was on my, I was on his left, so he was holding his phone in his right hand, so I could look across and see what he was doing on his phone. Because I got better than twenty twenty vision in both eyes. You see, he was on Facebook and he was scrolling Facebook and hitting like and just doing the Facebook thing, and also watching this video. I'm thinking you're not focusing on either of those. You've got, I haven't got a clue what either of those is about. Really. You're just mindlessly doing this. And he wasn't a young bloke. He was probably, I'd say, mid to late thirties, early forties. Hard to tell. He had quite a big beard, you know. But th- this is normal. This is normal. And it's a bad habit to get life. into. You it's are. a terrible habit. They, those people are just wandering through life without much thought at all. Well, I was talking um, about general life. Though, but I mean, people do this in business too. 
People yes. said, um, I, I, I was sent a post um, by one of my spies, like EBGS, and there was a discussion and all the people were kind of saying, this is the norm now, this is what they have to do. Spending three hours a day on LinkedIn, liking, sharing, viewing yeah. and commenting posts. And, you know, this isn't writing their own posts. This is engagement on others' posts. Mm. Well, bearing in mind, probably most people spend an hour or so writing a post, a post that we can knock out in 10 minutes. And they're probably spending four hours a day on LinkedIn. Now, if that was making them loads of money, fucking how at it. I'll do. I'll spend four hours on sales calls each day and every day if you let me, because three quarters of them are going to convert to fucking ten grand sales. But <laughs> they're on LinkedIn and they're just looking. Th th this is just lead generation now. Why would you spend four hours a day lead generation when it isn't working? Which isn't. But they just do it. Bad habits. Bad habits. Bad habits. If. if... The only way you're going to grow your business is not by accident. It's with purposeful focus. Vodka is also a bad habit. Is that vodka or is that water? That's vodka, mate. I'm back on the on the drink. Here's my supply. Thank God for that. <laughs> now I've been you're not going to grow your business by accident. The only way you're going to grow your business through is through focus, and we've gone through this recently not that we had a bunch of bad habits but we've we've recently experienced what it's like to truly focus i think we thought we had an idea what it's like to focus but we've been in a period of focus that has led to our best month ever yes so if you're not focusing on anything you're not strategically focusing on the right parts of your business you're just sort of that plastic bad bag being pulled left to right in the wind that is social media you're not going to get much done, are you? Nothing meaningful, nothing beyond the surface level at the very least. You're never going to be able to accomplish something profound. No. And here's, here's a, an uber bad habit, right? One bad habit is not getting into good habits. It's yeah. almost like a habit of omission. Think about it. And as Jim Rohn used to say, it's easy. it's just as easy to do the things often as not to do them. I mean, here's a good example. My mobility re re regime is basically three, what Toby calls workouts. No, it's four now, four workouts a week, which are like weights and stuff. But every morning, seven days a week, there's a, what he calls the cars. I can't remember what it stands for. But it basically, it basically takes in all the joints, from, you know, neck, thoracic spine, shoulders, scaps, wrists, elbows, knees and ankles and hips. And you move each one through a, a range, a full range of motion with under tension. It's not particularly demanding in terms of effort. I mean, it's a very, it's quite a high effort for a very short period of time. And at the end of it, you know, you're, you're sweating a little bit and you're not out of breath, but it takes maybe 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. And it makes a profound difference within days. I could notice the difference. Sometimes I would do it last thing at night so i don't ache so much in the morning when i wake up i do it before my weight training but the minimum is to do it for 12 minutes in the morning yet people tell toby i don't have time for it i, I that is just not true it is absolute bollocks it really is no, they can't find 12 minutes at some other time of the day maybe if the morning's too much for them please don't tell me you can't find 12 minutes in a day to take some action habitual action which could mean the difference between literally between life and death in in your older years because you know a huge a, a great cause of death for instance is you fall over and break something and there's something like a 60 percent mortality rate in people over 60 within two years after they break a hip something like it's, it's, it's fucking scary and most of that isn't so much the fall it's the lack of mobility after the fall and which is nothing to do with the hip replacement itself and some of them it's because they fall they break the hip and then they're so immobile and weak, they can't get up off the floor. That's what causes the damage. Well, simple good habit of 12 minutes a day for, for maybe the 10, 15, 20 years before that would almost certainly have prevented that from happening. So that's the that's that's bad habit of not having a good habit by omission. I yeah. saw a video uh, the other day of this woman. She, 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 was getting, she was unloading her car. She had a pram there. She'd just taken the baby out of the car seat, put it into the pram and uh, she's turned back around to grab like her handbag or something. Uh, once she's put the baby in the pram, the pram started rolling away and it's heading yeah. towards, um, it looked like a four lane highway in America. She sees this, obviously shits herself, starts running after it. She falls over 
she couldn't get up. This baby oh, is then just know. hurtling, and it's this this just the longest five seconds ever of this woman repeatedly trying to get up and falling over again and again, just unable to lift herself off the ground. Some man at the last minute, you see him just enter the frame. He absolutely sprints and like grabs hold of the pram just before it as it's about to get hit by oncoming traffic. And this woman is still just there like a fucking shit fish. Just because she's obviously <laughs> extremely unathletic and uh, it didn't look like she was the mother. So she was about to kill someone else's child, probably her grandchild or her her niece or nephew or something because, mm. <laughs> because she just let all of these bad habits creep in of drinking, overeating um, and exercise. never paying much attention to themselves. We spend being bored is essentially being with yourself. I think yeah. people don't really know who they are anymore because they never spend any time with themselves anymore. 